What do you know about it, Chigelski? What do any of us know about anything? Well, hello, and thank you for coming to my... Shoot. Hold on. Hold on. Here I come. Hello. Sorry about that. I promise I will get better at this. Anyway, as I was saying, thank you for coming to my video channel. And this will be my first, my inaugural video cast. And I thought what I do is choose something easy, something simple, something very, very non-controversial as, uh, as my first topic. And that is licenses. Anyway, believe it or not, I do not hate the GPL. I really don't. I have no idea where this idea or this concept got started that I was a GPL hater. I guess it might be due to my close affiliation with the Apache Software Foundation, uh, but for the record, the ASF does not hate the GPL either, but that's a topic for a different uh, video cast. Anyway, I really don't hate it. Uh, in fact, I code a lot of GPL. I contribute to a lot of GPL license projects. I also code and contribute to a lot of uh, LGPL or uh, Eclipse or Mozilla uh, license projects. And of course, a lot of Apache permissive licenses. And uh, for the record, I'm just going to go and uh, use the uh, shorthand of GPL for a strong copyleft license, uh, LGPL for a weak copyleft license, and Apache for a permissive licenses. Obviously, of course, there are a bunch of different types out there with each specific type of license. Um, GPL is not the only strong copyleft, for example. But it's most probably the most well-known and so it's easier for me to just uh, uh, use GPL instead of the, uh, the longer phrase, strong copy left. Although there will be times when I use both. Anyway, back to my point, I have no problem committing to GPL code. If there is a project which I think is very, very cool that I want to use or contribute to, and it happens to be under GPL or any other license, it doesn't prevent me. I have no moral imperative not to contribute to it. It really doesn't matter to me in some way what the license is of a project I'm contributing to. Now, of course, where the license does come into play is if and when you choose to use it and how you intend to distribute it. And that's the biggest thing. And there's a lot of FUD out there associated with good and bad licenses. If you were to ask me what the fairest open source license was, I would have to say in all honesty, I think it's most probably the we copyleft licenses, the e Eclipse and Mozilla and the LGPL, for example. Basically, the idea of these licenses are is that if you uh, use software that I provide and in the process of using it, whatever use means, in the process of using it, you find bugs and you fix them or make improvements to it or uh, refactor it in some way, which increases performance. But if you improve what it was that I gave you, then you're really, really obligated to share those improvements, those fixes with myself and the rest of the community out there who's also using that code. And that really makes a lot of sense. It enables the software that you're using to constantly grow and improve. Now, permissive licenses don't have that requirement. Uh, the intent and the understanding is that people will do that anyway, and then uh, out not only will they do that anyway, but it's a lot easier for people to do something uh, altruistic when they're not forced to, rather than being forced to. And of course, the strong copy lefts 
make that uh, condition, that requirement, not only on the software that you were using, that you're consuming and leveraging, but also on the software that uh, incorporates that, uh, that code base as well as part of a larger derivative work. I also don't think that there is one true universal open source language out there. Um, it really, really bothers me when people create a project and they just sort of like knee jerk, oh, I'm going to put this under the Apache license or I'm going to put this under uh, GPL v3 or, or whatever. It really is a tool on how you want that software, that code base to be used and distributed. It's basically an agreement, a promise between you the end user of that code, and of course the users that are further on downstream. And so it's not a trivial uh, selection process. Now I certainly do understand that there are um, a, a large group of people who feel that free software is a moral imperative and therefore the, uh, the only valid choice for a license is a strong copyleft because anything less than that allows for the possibility of non-free code. And even though I understand that, I don't necessarily agree with it. For me, the reason why I code, the reason why I contribute to open source projects is that I want as many people to use my code as possible. Uh, however, they use that code. Sure, some people will uh, contribute back, and that's fantastic. Certainly appreciate that. There will be some people who take it and never give anything back, but at least they're using it. And of course, if they're redistributing it out to a, a larger group of people, then it means a larger group of people are using it as well. So for me, what's important is the um, ubiquity of the code out there, that as many people are using it as possible. And actually, if you look at you know, the, uh, the reasons why uh, the ASF, the Apache Software Foundation, um, prefers the Apache license. It's also for that reason as well. Um, if you go to the, uh, uh, the page on the ASF site about why is Apache free, it basically says exactly what I'm saying as well. Make sure that you know the requirements and the conditions of the license before you choose one. It can be very, very difficult uh, changing a license if you happen to pick the wrong one, the wrong one, uh, early on in the process. Now, traditionally and normally, it's easier to go from a uh, permissive license to a strong copyleft license. Uh, it's much, much, much more difficult to do the reverse unless you are lucky enough to have full and complete copyright over all the code, uh, all the patches and things like that. So anyway, make sure that you make a correct choice when you're creating, a, a, you know, when you're choosing an open source license. The other thing, and again, this is very, very important, be sure you choose a license. Just putting something out on the web, whether it's on SourceForge or GitHub or wherever, does not make it open source. If there's not a license associated with it, if there's not an explicit license associated with your code repo, for example, then it's not under an open source license. In fact, uh, legally, it's under copyright and people may have the, uh, the ability to view it, but they don't and, and use it but they certainly don't have the legal ability to base under things off of it, redistribute your code and things like that. And that's why if you've been following me on Twitter, which you should, um, at Jim Jag, the post will be, well, the link will be down below. That's why I've always made a big deal about the lack of licenses on the vast majority of projects on GitHub. Basically, because it gives the end user a false sense of entitlement, um, access to the code base. 
uh, if you go to a GitHub repo and there's no license on there, sure, the GitHub uh, terms and conditions uh, require something, but GitHub does not own the copyright to that code. The person who's developing the code, who's who's uh, you know who owns the repo, owns the copyright, and they're the only one who can go and provide licensing. They're the only one who can agree to the license terms associated with it. Uh, in fact, for me, the biggest worry I have um, will be someone using a um, a project on GitHub that doesn't have a license associated with it. It being a very very popular. Uh, repo, a lot of people using it, forking it, somebody then using it in a larger work, either open source or proprietary, and the original copyright holder saying, you know what, it's under, for example, GPL v3, uh, which will have a major impact on the larger work associated with it. Uh, something like that happening uh, will, I'm almost sure, will happen. And I think it's going to be a major issue, a major problem for the open source and the free software world. And that's really why I've uh, always been banging the drum about making sure if you're on GitHub, be very, very careful about what you're using. And if you're a creator on GitHub, if, it, if you have code up there that you've provided, make sure there's a license associated with it. Anyway, uh, as I said before, I'm not a hater of GPL. I love all licenses. Licenses are, are, are tools, and you can use a hammer, and you can use a screwdriver, and you can use a pair of pliers. They're all very, very different, but they all have very, very different uses. And it would be stupid for someone to say, I'm a pliers hater, I just use a hammer, because sometimes you need to use a pair of pliers. And that's the way it is with licenses as well. Anyway, I hope this, uh, this little video has been a little bit of uh, fun for you, that you've learned a little bit, uh, that it's been somewhat entertaining as well. Again, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Comments are welcomed and appreciated, so please feel free to add them below. And if you have any ideas on other topics you would like for me to consider and talk about, again, just add them below. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.